Welcome to this video. Today, you're going to learn how to use the advanced structure having plus past participle. This is a question that a student had submitted and it's a great question, so I'm happy to explain this. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you feel confident speaking English in public so you can take your career and your life to the next level. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. Let's talk about how to use the structure having plus past participle. The past participle is your third form of the verb. Now, we use this structure when the action is complete. So whatever the action is, if the structure having plus past participle is used, you know that the person has done that action. Now, as for sentence structure, this is commonly used to start a sentence. So in that case, notice your sentence starts with the verb having. It doesn't start with a subject. It starts with having. And it's just implied that whoever is talking is the subject. So for example, one of the most common ways to use this is having said that having said that. So said, of course, is the third form of the verb say. Having said that. Now, when somebody uses this expression, they're letting you know that they're going to reference something that they've previously said. In this expression, having said that, the that is the words that the person previously said. Now, normally they just said it. It was the what they just said. It is possible that it could be something they said a while ago, but generally it's they just said it. So for example, you could be in a meeting and your boss is praising everyone saying awesome job guys we really did a great job this week our sales are up our performance is up and those are the words now he wants to transition and he could say having said that so he's referencing the words he just said remember the words he just said were positive okay so you could say having said that we still have a lot of work to do. So he's giving you all this praise, but he wants you to keep in mind that there's still work to do. So he's balancing it out. Having said that, we still have a lot of work to do. So that's a very common way to use this expression. But you don't have to only use it with the verb say, you can use this with pretty much any verb. But remember, it's to show that the action is complete. Let's say my friend and I are talking about marathons and my friend wants to run a marathon and is talking about training for this marathon. Now I could say, having run a marathon, having run a marathon, I can give you some tips. So I'm letting my friend know that this action of running a marathon is complete for me. I've done it. I've run a marathon. Having run a marathon, I can give you some tips. So we commonly use this just to show the experiences that we've had that are complete for us in order to educate or in order to inform or maybe even in order to show sympathy or empathy for someone to show that you understand their situation because you've experienced it as well. Now I talked about how most commonly it's used to start a sentence. This isn't the only location. You can use it as the second part of a sentence and it's going to follow a comma. So for example, I could say, New York City is known for its busy streets. And having lived there, I can confirm that this is true. So notice, it starts the next part of a sentence after a comma, and I'm just using and to show that connection between the two ideas. 
Of course, I can divide these into two separate sentences and say, New York City is known for its busy streets, period. Having lived there, I can confirm that it's true. So the choice is yours. It doesn't really matter. It probably just depends on the sentence. But you will see this most commonly at the start of a sentence. And the important thing to remember is that the action is complete. So now you know how to use this advanced sentence structure. Of course, it's your turn to practice. So I want you to leave three different examples using three different verbs. So you also really get comfortable with the past participle because you need the third form of the verb, which is the least common verb used. So I want you to get comfortable with that as well. So leave three different examples in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And if you're a busy professional who's serious about improving your English so you can take your career and your life to the next level, then I want you to go to my website, j4esenglish.com. There you'll find a free case study. In this case study, you'll learn how to feel confident speaking English in public so you can impress your boss and your clients with your message in only 30 days. Simply click the button, enter your name and email, and you'll get instant access to the case study. And until next time, happy studying. Awesome job learning this new advanced structure. Get ready to show off your English skills and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.